Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I'm the co-founder of Taku. In this video, I'll be doing the analysis of Dashcat 1, which was opened for students to take last week. If you have enrolled for the Kraku mocks, I would recommend you to definitely start taking the mocks according to the schedule that we have given. If you are a premium student of Kraku, you can take the mocks at any time before CAT, but I would recommend you to actually strictly follow the schedule because we have planned the mocks also in such a way that you get regular practice. Having said that, let us start the analysis. Let us first look at the verbal section. After that, we look at the LRDA section and finally we look at the quant section. In verbal section, there are four reading comprehension sets. I felt that the verbal section is definitely on the easier to medium side. This is not a very difficult uh, section. There were four RCs. We can go through all the RCs also and I'll give you my opinion about each of the RC. There was one RC which was about uh, slightly philosophical. Maybe it was about logic uh, and anti-logic. Uh, that I found to be slightly confusing uh, because the prose itself or the paragraph itself or the logic behind the way it was written itself was confusing. It was about logic and uh, so there was some... Uh, the way it was structured also was slightly confusing because that was the whole point of the passage. I didn't find it to be too easy, but I thought the questions were definitely doable. Even though it was difficult to read and completely understand the passage, I think the questions were not very, very difficult. Uh, the second RC was about economics. It was about inflation. This I found to be uh, one of the easier ones uh, out of the four. The reason for that is because I think I personally was interested in economics and I could understand most of the things that were being mentioned. So I was able to answer uh, most of the questions easily and it was not very difficult. I felt even the uh, questions were following directly from uh, whatever argument was given in the passage. So this I think was definitely a doable uh, set. Uh, the second set about inflation and gold I think was definitely doable. The third uh, reading comprehension was about history. This was about agriculture and history and hunter gatherers. This I felt was easy. I thought I read the uh, passage also very easily. I thought I could understand it. But when I was actually attempting it, I was getting uh, some questions wrong. So probably I think the questions were more on the difficult side, although the paragraph was easy to read. Finally, the fourth one uh, I found to be very uh, tricky, both the questions as well as the passage. This was uh, about technology. This was about artificial intelligence. This again, I felt was not uh, very easy to read. And even the questions I felt were not very easy to read. This was with respect to the reading comprehensions. But having said that, if we first finish the reading comprehensions, I think there were at least two RCs which are definitely doable. One of the RC, like I mentioned, was with respect to economics, uh, because I thought that was a fairly straightforward one, economics and gold. And if you pick any one of the remaining RCs, uh, whatever suits your interest, whether it is philosophy or whether it was the history about this hunters, gatherers and agriculture, or whether it is about artificial intelligence, I think one more set can be done. Because there is one set which I think is definitely doable, one more set I think you can do. In RCs also, what I felt was, one of the things that I used, I did quite well when I was attempting the section. You can also look at the sectional attempt, my mock attempt of verbal section in the Kraku website. If you go to Dashcat analysis, you'll find it. What I normally use for even uh, attempting this uh, reading comprehension, not just in mocks, but even in actual examination, is the option elimination. So in reading comprehension, what I try to do is, I don't try to find which is the option which is correct. Because I feel that of the four options, all of them have uh, some amount of truth and some amount of uh, falsehood. So what I try to do is, which of them has any falsehood is what I will look at. For example, if you have option A, B, C and D, option A probably will have 60% uh, truth and 40% falsehood. Option B will have 80% truth and 20% uh, falsehood. There will be option C which is completely true and option D which is uh, say again 50% uh, true and 50% false. If you are trying to figure out which of the options is true, you will get confused because all the four options seem to be true. Because all of them have some element of uh, truth in it. So I go with the option elimination method where I try to see if any option is contradicting anything that is given in the passage. Once I figure it out, I will mark it off. And then I try to see what are the options which are remaining. Sometimes if I am lucky, I get only one option remaining. Sometimes I get two options and then I have to pick which of the two suits the uh, answer best. This option elimination strategy helps me in improving the accuracy in reading comprehension. And this is what I have done. I think it worked out well for me in this mock attempt. Now coming to the verbal uh, section. In verbal section, I think there were uh, two para summary questions. I think one of them was definitely tricky. And there were para jumbles. In general, I struggle with para jumbles. But I think one para jumble was on the easier side. I could get it uh, quite quickly. The other para jumble I think was definitely tricky. I was not able to solve it. The out of context and para insertion I felt were definitely easy because I didn't think they were uh, very confusing. Overall, uh, I would say this is a section which uh, is definitely scoring. If you get uh, a section like this in the actual examination, you should be fairly happy because there are RCs which are readable. There are uh, some RCs where the questions are also uh, not very difficult and the verbal section was definitely on the easier side. So if you are looking at the actual cutoffs, I will give you the exact cutoffs for 95%, 90% and 99% in my opinion. 
towards the end of this uh, video but i would say that anybody who has scored more than 40 would have done fairly well so something like if you have attempted 20 questions with 80 percent accuracy i think you have done a very good job probably we are uh, saying that that will be close to 99 percentile now let us look at lrdi in lrdi there were four sets i think all the four sets were definitely on the difficult side there was no set which is a very easy set sometimes in exams and in mocks you get sets which are very easy but this time i felt all the four sets were definitely on the difficult side if you are looking at the four sets the first set was an arrangement set uh, the arrangement set uh, was definitely on the more difficult side with respect to arrangements. Normally, many of the arrangement sets that we give in mocks are fairly on the easier side. If somebody works for like say 10 to 12 minutes, they will get it correct. Over here, uh, I think this was a tricky set. Uh, it is a medium level difficulty set because it is an arrangement set where you won't get uh, too confused about the setup. You know exactly what you have to find out. It is not a new type of set. That's why I think it is a medium set. But uh, this is definitely on the harder side. It is, uh, if you are first time solving this kind of arrangement set, I think you will be completely lost at sea. But even otherwise also, I don't think this was a fairly simple set, which is the case with most arrangements. I think this was definitely on the uh, medium to difficult side. The second one was a scheduling set. The scheduling set, I think was, if you actually understand the problem and if you actually understand how to solve it, it was not very difficult. But this was a new type of a set. And this also, we have created uh, situations where it gets slightly tricky. So there are many banana skins in it. So that is the reason I think this is definitely a hard set, uh, especially trying to understand the exact setup and then trying to write down all the cases. And many of the cases, uh, there are uh, slightly tricky cases also involved. So this is definitely a banana skin, which can be avoided. The next one was a quant based uh, L, uh, LR set. Um, somebody who likes numbers, somebody who has uh, that intuitive sense of numbers, not about uh, arithmetic or anything like that. Somebody who has like knows what is a prime number, who is very good at what are the factors, what are the type of numbers that uh, have different types of factors. If you have that kind of a sense, especially for numbers which are less than 100, I think those guys will be able to solve this set uh, in say 10 to 12 minutes. But somebody who is a normal student, a good student, uh, but who doesn't have this intuitive sense with numbers, I think will take longer time. This also has multiple cases, but if you write down the cases, many of the cases get cancelled. But you will figure out that they get cancelled only if you write it down. So this is in that way slightly a time consuming set. But uh, if you just attempt this set and if you, like is mentioned earlier, if you get that intuitive sense of numbers, uh, because many of the numbers are geometric progressions. There are geometric progressions which are involved in uh, nearly every row of this. So, and you have to find out which are the different, different cases which have geometric progressions. So, somebody who has an idea that, okay, say X, uh, if say one of the numbers is say 84, what is the other number which will be part of that uh, geometric progression, which is a two digit number. If you have those kind of intuitive sense that what are the common factors, of 84 and another particular number, then you will be able to eliminate cases quite quickly. So having that kind of a sense, I think is important to solve this set easily. But for a normal student, I think he would definitely find this a difficult set. The next one is the DI set. Uh, the DI set I thought was uh, slightly lengthy to read, but overall it was not very difficult to understand. And I think this is definitely a set that is doable. A good student, that is a student who is scoring say 90 percentile plus, and if that person spends 20 minutes on this DI set, they will definitely get it correct and they'll get all the four questions correct. This is not a very trivial DI set, but this is definitely not a very difficult DI set. This is definitely not a hard DI set. This is a medium level DI set, which is a set that you should definitely attempt if you get in the examination. So overall, if you are a student, I would say that in this kind of a mock, if you get two sets correct, you are scoring 99 percentile plus. And I think solving two sets is possible in this. The reason I'm saying it is possible is because the DA set for a normal student, 90 percentile plus student, the DA set he can answer in 20 minutes. And the other set he will have 20 minutes to answer. But uh, the whole point of this is that the set selection is very important. You should figure out what are the kind of sets that you want to solve. Another thing I would say is many times in LRDIs, I always advise students to look at the options in questions. You, for example, in the arrangement set, uh, you look at the arrangement, you get many cases and then you go to the options. And then you try to figure out if some of the clues can be got from the options based on say if it is option a b c d then you can figure out okay if, say one of the question is who is sitting opposite b and the options that are given are a c d and e and then if you have cases where there is f who is sitting opposite b you can actually directly eliminate that case because you know that there is one question where either a is sitting opposite uh, b or c or d or e so that way there is a lot of information that you can actually get by looking at the questions and trying to get clues from the questions. In this particular mock, however, there are very few clues that you will actually get from the questions. Uh, normally from next mock, I think what we will try to do is uh, give the questions in such a way that you can actually get some clues from the questions. 
because in actual examination that also is a good source of clues by looking at all the questions and you will try to eliminate some cases based on the questions however that is not possible in this mock uh, next like i mentioned earlier the selection of the set is very important and optional elimination i think in the arrangement set the first set uh, where i said it was an arrangement set which was slightly on the more difficult side i think some of the questions you can eliminate some options and quant based di questions like i mentioned earlier somebody who is not very comfortable with numbers somebody who doesn't know immediately what are the uh, hcf of say two different numbers if i mentioned earlier that say 84 and 56 what is the hcf if you know immediately that it is 28 those kind of people i think will be able to solve the quant based di questions quite quickly uh, but people who are not very comfortable with these factors numbers geometric progressions all of them i think there is a good chance you'll get wrong answers in the quant set so this is about lrda let us go to quant with respect to quant i think this was definitely a fairly difficult uh, section we tried to imitate uh, the kind of questions that were asked in cat 2023 the amount of difficulty that was there that was the reason we actually set a paper which was definitely on the more difficult side even then we made it a point to ensure that there were some questions which are definitely easy if you're looking at uh, some of the questions uh, let me actually look at some of the questions which i thought were definitely on the easier side there were some questions in profit loss there were some questions in simple interest uh, there were also some questions in averages and duration proportion i think mostly normally if you're looking at uh, arithmetic questions like over here or even over here i think there were definitely there were some questions which are easy i think at least four to five questions were definitely on the easier side which you should definitely get correct uh, there were some questions which are definitely difficult many of the geometry questions number systems and probability questions i found were definitely more difficult than what uh, a normal mock uh, will be but uh, overall i felt this was definitely a difficult section uh, if you were able to get say eight questions correct if you attempted eight and got eight correct i think that's a fantastic attempt even otherwise also if you don't panic when you look at the questions and you feel that this is uh, inordinately more difficult even then if you work with a calm mind you will at least get five questions correct by you i mean anybody who is a 90 percentile somebody who regularly scores 90 percentile plus if they take this uh, section with a calm mind i think they would definitely get five to six questions correct there were definitely some easy questions that we have actually put and other than that i think there were also many questions which are on the difficult side but again they were not exceptionally difficult they were not questions which nobody can solve it is just that they were slightly on the lengthier side it is also possible that uh, they were, are slightly tricky those are the kind of things that we put but overall like i mentioned earlier arithmetic was definitely on the easier side algebra was moderate but there were uh, geometry probability and number systems which i think were definitely difficult that i think is the overall uh, analysis for dashcat 1 if you have not taken it i would recommend you to take dashcat 1 uh, as soon as possible try to take the dashcat uh, according to the schedule that we have given because that is going to help you uh, maintain that momentum towards cat Overall, I think the percentile uh, for quant is 24 for 99 percentile. That is, if you attempted 8 questions and get all the 8 correct, then I think definitely you are getting 99 percentile. LRDI 24, uh, probably I think uh, maybe 20 to 24 I think should be sufficient because LRDI I think is slightly on the difficult side. So, if you get 2 sets correct, you will definitely get 99 percentile. But even if you get say 1 and a half uh, set correct and maybe 1 or 2 questions more, also that should uh, get you close to that 99 percentile mark. VRC was definitely on the easier side. So, a 99 percentile mark will be between say 40 to 44. This is the overall uh, assumption that we are having. I hope that you found it useful. If you have any comments about Dashcat 1, please do comment below this video. And if you found it useful, please share this video with your friends, especially students who are enrolled to Kraku, because I want all the premium students of Kraku to watch the Dashcat analysis.